everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate ringsidenews.com. As a reminder, starting with the next video, I will be posting status updates on Facebook.com slash Aaron Rift and posts on Twitter.com slash Aaron Rift for particular episodes of No DQ and a video where you can submit questions. Follow me on those pages. Spring.me slash Aaron Rift is done for the time being, perhaps forever. But I still have a few more questions here left over, which I'm going to get to right now. First one today comes from E Smith 21719992. Hey Aaron, first time asker. Why is it that just so many fans, including yourself, can't just sit back and enjoy Taker's last couple matches instead of bashing him and the booking around his return? I understand the missed opportunity of building a future star, but still. I feel that Undertaker's last match should have been WrestleMania 30. If he was going to lose, that should have been it. Now, if you're going to bring Undertaker back, then I, I feel maybe I would have been okay with it if it was being done in a way that can really end his career on a high note. And you can give the fans something really special. To me, Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar in a rematch is not special. It's not a rematch that I was dying to see. I felt that the WrestleMania 30 match was very disappointing. And even if Undertaker can go, and even with smoke and mirrors, I'm, I I just don't feel right about this match because I feel it's, it's a no-win situation. If Undertaker wins, it's going to erase everything that WWE's done with Brock Lesnar. If Brock Lesnar wins, why bring Undertaker back in the first place? I feel the whole point of bringing Undertaker back would be to create a feel-good moment so Undertaker can uh, go off into the sunset in a winning situation rather than losing. I, I just don't understand how this is going to end in a positive way that will satisfy people. If it was me, if I was going to bring back Undertaker... I would have brought him back at WrestleMania and put him in there with any number of people. Sting, for instance. You could have put, it, put him in there with Sting. Match may or may not be good, but you can have two legends going at it, uh, a dream match, and you can have Undertaker win, let Sting pick up a win at SummerSlam and Survivor Series or whatever, and then have Undertaker win at WrestleMania, both of them embrace, and uh, they both end their careers um, on a high note. That's how I would have done it if I was going to bring back Undertaker for one more match. Got this question here. Hey Aaron, since the crowd is in New York for SummerSlam and it's likely to be a smart crowd, do you think that there's a possibility they will hijack the show and boo the main event? I have my doubts, but I'm hopeful. Your thoughts, please answer in video. Well, when you say boo the main event, are you talking about Undertaker and Lesnar or are you talking about Cena and Rollins? Um, it's possible the crowd will definitely turn on John Cena. I, I, I don't even say it's possible. I think it's inevitable that that crowd will be heavily behind Seth Rollins and they will boo John Cena out of the building. And it'll be your usual, let's go Cena, Cena sucks. Or maybe, maybe it'll just be F you Cena. Uh, it's New York, so anything's possible. I could see the crowd hijacking at least one of the matches on the show, or even more. Um, I'm, I'm sure they'll boo Roman Reigns, and they, they'll they'll cheer for all their favorites. They'll cheer for Kevin Owens. Um, that that match will actually have a lot of potential to be a match of the year, I think. Kevin Owens and Cesaro. With that match, that's two fan favorites in New York. Uh, that'll get a tremendous reaction. That, that will be epic. Um... I, I don't see anything like a Goldberg, Brock Lesnar type situation from WrestleMania 20. Um, just because the fans like Seth Rollins, they're not going to completely crap on that match. And Undertaker and Lesnar, I think fans will be respectful. It's Undertaker. I don't see fans crapping on him. And, you know, people online have been supporting Undertaker despite my comments. You know, I've gotten a lot of criticism for uh, knocking The Undertaker's return and then that storyline. But there are a lot of people out there that respect The Undertaker, that love him, that want to give him the benefit of, of the doubt, and they believe that he'll still be able to go out there and deliver a memorable match. And I'm hopeful too, like I've said in previous videos. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping that, that this Undertaker-Lesnar match is fantastic, they have a brilliant finish for it, and everybody's happy. I, I have my serious doubts, but 
I, I'm hopeful that it, it, it will it will be worth all the effort. And, uh, you know, everyone loves Brock Lesnar. It's not like WrestleMania 20 where Lesnar was leaving and Goldberg was leaving and everybody knew it. This is a different situation. So I don't see I don't see the fans completely hijacking either main event. But it is possible that one of the matches on the show, maybe involving Sheamus or Orton or one of those guys, um, it's possible, big show, you know, one of those guys, I could see the crowd just completely not caring and, and doing the the JBL chants and, and all that stuff. All right, got this one here from Gotham Coach. Hey, I need some help here. Planning my trip for WrestleMania 32. Need to know where the Hall of Fame and Raw will be held the night after WrestleMania. Usually it's in the main arena um, of the host city. And in this case, Dallas, Texas, the American Airlines Arena. One would think that that's going to be the site of the Hall of Fame and WrestleMania 32. I, I would be shocked if it wasn't. Um, so just plan for that. Plan for that that arena. And uh, if it's not there, it'll be somewhere very close uh, to the to the main area where, where the event's being held. All right, this one comes from Derek J. 1993. Hey, Aaron, why has Global Force Wrestling started making TV tapings when they don't have a TV deal yet? Well, the idea is that they want to tape stuff for television and they want to have something ready to go that they can shop around to TV stations. You know, they, they want to have all this stuff ready to go and and uh, present it and hopefully score a television deal, you know, having a, a well-edited, well-produced product and say, hey, look, we got, we got some quality television here for you. You know, would you be interested in signing us to a TV deal? Um, so, you know, you, you have to look at it as it's like a pilot. I mean, that that's what that first TV taping was and these upcoming TV tapings. They're, they're essentially pilot episodes. Um, Global Force Wrestling just trying to have something that they can present to uh, stations and, and hopefully score a deal. All right, this one comes from Titus E. Manuel, 92. Hello, Aaron. Greetings from Romania. A tough enough question for you. What happens if a wrestler doesn't take the pin and decides to win a match by himself, not according to plan, especially in a championship match? Did something like this ever happen in WWE or another promotion? Well, here's the thing. These guys that are in WWE, they spend years and years trying to get into the company. They just aren't handed a job. And they are not going to risk losing their job by doing something like that. There, there's really... There's really no chance because if somebody did that, they would be right out the door. They would lose their job and it would be hard for them to get work anywhere else because nobody would trust them. Uh, so it, it, it's extremely unprofessional to go against the script and uh, it, it, it happens very rarely. And um, you know, there, there's been some instances over the years, not many because people aren't that dumb. Uh, you know, they're, they're not going to risk losing their job because they're unhappy um, or they, they want to be champion. I mean, that, that's ridiculous. Um, yeah, anybody that did that, they, they would just lose their jobs instantly. And that, that would be the end of them. All right, this one comes from Jericho454. Hey, Aaron, do you think Hulk Hogan will go in a different wrestling promotion since WWE fired him? Well, I'm sure he, he would like to have work somewhere else, but I, I cannot imagine anybody hiring Hulk Hogan right now with all the heat. Uh, even TNA. I don't see TNA bringing back Hulk Hogan. That, that's how bad the situation is right now. Hulk Hogan is lucky if he'll ever find work in the wrestling business again, and maybe one day WWE will forgive him and bring him back in a small capacity, maybe have him appear on Raw, maybe have him induct someone into the Hall of Fame. Uh, but I don't see WWE investing a whole lot in him anytime soon, if ever. And if, if WWE is not going to do anything with him, I don't I don't see anybody else bring him back. I mean, maybe years down the line, he'll be able to do autograph signings and he'll be able to do uh, public appearances and he'll be able to make money off of that. But right now, I, I, I do not see anybody with a brain um, going anywhere near Hulk Hogan right now. And that includes GWF, um, that includes TNA, um, say what you will about TNA, but I don't think that they're that dumb to bring back Hogan when there's all this heat. 
All right, this one comes from The Real 169447. Hey, Aaron, love the videos. When John Cena and Randy Orton retire, who do you think will be the ones to induct them? Well, this is an interesting question. I think with John Cena, because he's Vince McMahon's boy, you know, Vince and John Cena are homies and all that, as we saw at Survivor Series 2005. I, I think Vince would be the one, if he's still alive. I mean, this is uh, this could be 20 years down the line, um, even 30 years down the line. Who knows if, J if John Cena keeps going at it. Um, could be 30 years. I, I don't want to say 30 years. I don't want to scare people out there. But um, if not Vince, Triple H, I think would be a logical choice to induct John Cena. I think somebody in a top position in the company would induct John Cena. As for Randy Orton... Um, would probably be John Cena. I, I think that John Cena is Randy Orton's most memorable opponent and certainly the guy that Randy Orton had the most matches with. I mean, one of those guys have like 100 matches over the years or maybe even more than that. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think Cena would induct Orton and Cena would be inducted by Vince if he's still alive. And if not, then Triple H or Stephanie. All right, this one comes from Nick Bianchi 12. What do you think the chances are for Goldberg to come back for one more match at WrestleMania 32, and who could he go against? Do you think WWE would use him in a high-profile match against Cena, Reigns, or a mid-card match against a Sheamus or Ryback or Cesaro? Goldberg ain't coming back for a mid-card match, first of all. Goldberg's coming back. He would want to be in a, a top-tier match, and I don't think Goldberg wants to come back. I don't think WWE wants him back. I think the chances of him coming back are slim to none. I, I think the ship sailed on that. If Goldberg was kind of going to come back, they would have brought him back a few years ago when Ryback was really hot, and they would have done the Goldberg versus Ryback match. But now it's too late, and uh, I, I, I think Goldberg is perfectly fine not coming back to WWE, and I think WWE is perfectly fine not working with Goldberg again. All right, this last one today comes from Genetic Freak LOL. Hey, Aaron, I was watching some older matches and started to wonder, why don't we see matches end in small packages and so forth anymore? In my opinion, it brought a little bit of element of surprise to the endings. It's just a different era in WWE. They're, they're hell-bent on doing these epic matches with 30 near falls in every match, and finishers don't mean anything anymore. Uh, the AA, everyone kicks out of it. I mean, that that's just the way it is in WWE and how they're... They're booking their matches now. Um, I, I do miss the old days when somebody could win with any move. Somebody could win at any time. Matches might go as short as one minute. I mean, who cares if you don't get a great 15-minute, 20-minute match with all these kickouts and back-and-forth epicness? You know, I, I think it would make it a little bit more realistic to have matches end in a short period of time. I know people were pissed SummerSlam 05 when, when Benoit beat Orlando Jordan and, like, 20 seconds or whatever. I thought that that was great. I actually loved it because it was just something totally unexpected. And uh, I wish WWE would do that more often. And, uh, you know, when a guy goes for a pinfall, he might very well get the pinfall by doing any kind of move. It doesn't matter. Um, people can win at any time. I think that that would, that would make the matches more unpredictable. But what do I know? I mean, people react to the John Cena near falls on Raw every week. Um, and even though... He kicks out 10 times in a match, and the other guy kicks out of all the moves. People still buy into it. So what do I know? Anyways, that will wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest, and I will see you guys next time.